Hello friends, my name is Dheeraj Vaidya from wallstreetmojo.com. This is part 27 of our ratio analysis video series. And in this installment, we learn all about total leverage. In simple terms, total leverage measures the overall impact of the use of fixed expense as well as debt to generate better returns. In this tutorial, we have basically four objectives. Number one, understand what total leverage basically means. Number two, its formula and calculations. Number three, We'll calculate total leverage for uh, Colgate and number four, its interpretations and uses. But before we jump into the tutorial, a quick reminder, we will be needing all the working files of Colgate case study for this video. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, please do so from the link in the description box below. And to keep yourself updated with investment banking and financial modeling concepts, please do subscribe to our channel, Wall Street Mojo. So let's get started. What is total leverage? Total leverage is a part of the ratio analysis framework and it comes under the business risk category. In our earlier videos, we did discuss about operating leverages and financial leverages. Think of total leverage as the cumulative impact of both types of leverages. Just to reiterate, you know, what is operating leverage? Operating leverage actually is the impact on the operating profit of the company because of companies investments in fixed assets so higher the fixed assets investments you know higher will be the sensitivity towards the operating profit we did discuss this because we said if you invest heavily in your fixed assets your variable costs will be lower because you'll get economies of scale and uh, because your variable cost or the cost of goods sold will be lower you know your operating profit will be highly sensitive to the changes in sales all right, so this is operating leverage. Financial leverage, we also discussed this in our last video. We said that the presence of debt, which is used to finance your fixed assets, you know, debt ultimately leads to the interest expense, right? If you look at the income statement, you will find interest expense as one of the entry below the earnings before interest and taxes. The presence of interest expense makes it a bit more sensitive the net income becomes more sensitive because of the presence of debt right higher the debt higher will be the sensitivity of the net income so financial leverage tries and captures the impact of debt on the income statement and the total leverage is nothing but the cumulative impact from sales to operating profit called as the operating leverage and from the operating profit to the net income through financial leverage so it, it cumulatively it takes care of both types of leverages Let's now look at the example that we did earlier and we'll get more clarity as to what uh, you know it means. In our earlier video, we discussed about the degree of operating leverages. So how did we calculate degree of operating leverages? We said that it's basically changes in uh, operating profit. Okay, so let me just demarcate this sales and net income okay these three are the primary line items that are important for the financial leverage operating leverage and total leverage now the impact from sales to ebit okay between this this is captured by operating leverage and how did we calculate that we said operating leverage is changes in ebit divided by changes in sales so we captured how uh, your EBIT is sensitive towards changes in sales. Okay, so from here to here, it's captured by operating profit. All right, operating leverage. Sorry. Now between between this and this EBIT and net income, we saw that financial leverage takes care of that. Right. Now what is financial leverage? We said financial leverage is percentage change in net income divided by percentage change in EBIT. Between these two lines, which are highlighted, only variable change is the interest expense because that's dependent on the amount of debt you've taken. Tax is flat at 20%. The degree of financial leverage actually captures this impact between the two. We'll call this as financial leverage. We've discussed this in detail in our previous videos. So if you still have some doubt, Please go back and look at that videos first. 
what is the degree of uh, total leverage or we'll just call it as total leverage the total leverage is the cumulative impact so let's define this via a formula first percentage change in net income divided by percentage change in sales okay the total leverage will be from sales to net income so percentage change in net income divided by percentage change in sales okay so we already have percentage change in net income that is 17.3 percent and we have already calculated percentage change in sales that is 11.11 percent okay so we have already done the calculations let's calculate total leverage now total leverage will be 17.6 percent divided by 11.33 percent so it comes out to be 1.588 okay so this is the total leverage okay cumulative impact of both of them so how do we interpret this total leverage we say that for every one percent change in sales there is a 1.588 percentage change in net income and it's a cumulative impact of both the operating and the financial leverage okay in terms of formula this total leverage formula can be expressed in the form of degree of operating leverage and degree of financial leverage so i'll just uh, write that formula it's, it's basically divided into two parts uh, the first part as i said is the degree of operating leverage okay so what is the formula for degree of operating leverage percentage change in ebit divided by percentage change in sales right and the second part is degree of financial leverage so that is percentage change in net income divided by percentage change in your EBIT. All right. So what happens when we uh, uh, multiply both of them, both the formulas, degree of operating leverage with degree of financial leverage? What do we get? If you look at the denominator here, the percentage change in EBIT is in the denominator here and here it is in the numerator. So it gets cancelled out. And what is left is just the final version of total leverage that is percentage change in net income divided by percentage change in sales. So the key word here is you need to multiply both the leverages to get the total leverage. So let's look at uh, this in our formula as well. So we have already calculated the two degree of operating leverage and degree of financial leverage. So let's multiply the two. We should get 1.588. All right. So let's do that degree of operating leverage is 1.328 and degree of financial leverage is 1.196 let's multiply the two and let's see what the answer is okay so it comes out to be 1.588 all right as we can see these two numbers are same so always remember we need to multiply both the degree of operating leverage and degree of financial leverage to find out the total leverage okay let us now calculate the total leverage for Colgate. So for that, I want you to open the income statement here and uh, scroll down to row number 80. Okay, so this is where we are going to calculate the total leverage. In our earlier videos, uh, we did calculate the operating leverage and the financial leverage. And for uh, that, we had already looked at the percentage change in sales and operating profit and net income. So basically, whatever we need for calculating the total leverage has been already done. We just need to apply the formula. So what is the formula for the total leverage? The total leverage is percentage change in net income divided by percentage change in sales. OK, so let's do that. Percentage change in net income divided by percentage change in sales. So that's the total leverage. So it comes out to be minus 9.35. and for the other years also it is like 30.33 minus 1.26 and 2.66 so obviously these are kind of volatile numbers we don't we are not in a position to actually interpret these numbers altogether let's do another exercise here as we calculated total leverage using this percentage of net income divided by percentage of sales let's verify if we multiply these two will we get this minus 9.35 or not let's do that here so we said earlier total leverage is operating leverage multiplied by financial leverage. Okay, so I'm just multiplying the two so as to verify the final total leverage is number as same. Okay, so this is again as we saw 
it's minus 9.35 as well so as you can see both the numbers do match and uh, yes this is how we go about you know understanding what total leverage is and uh, its calculations and its interpretations i hope you found this video to be useful please do like and share and if you have any feedback or want to suggest a topic for any future video then you may do so by writing about it in the comment section below and we come up with very interesting videos on investment banking and core finance topics regularly. So if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do so by clicking on the subscribe button below so that you can get the notifications about our latest videos as soon as we release them. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day.